Hi, just a quick blab video with a potential issue with the Keysight U1272A multimeter here. Uh, uh, one of my viewers, Bernard Roth, was measuring, using this meter to measure the current on his uh, power supply, like a project or whatever, and getting some strange readings on the display. And um, it turns out that it was near to the leads that we used to measure the current, we're near to an RFID reader. And, uh, you know, he played around, finally narrowed it down using a function generator to a noise pickup. And I'll show you this uh, right now. It's some sort of, you know, conducted common mode thing. I Anyway, let's have a go, see if we can recreate it. So what I've got is the U1272A connected to my function gen here and I've got uh, 5 megahertz the frequency does matter as we'll see in a minute uh, 10 volts peak to peak square wave okay Oop, touchy feely and I'm just going to take um, just the positive uh, terminal here here we go and I'm going to plug this in on the amps range okay so well it's milliamps it'll switch to amps when we plug it into here and look what we get the ground's just flapping around in the breeze. We're getting negative five amps. A huge reading like that. And you take it out and it goes away. You plug in the negative one. Let's try that. And it's not as high, but you still get a reading on there. Now, there's obviously some sort of conducted noise, which is uh, referenced to, because this uh, output here is mains earth referenced. So uh, that, you know, is there is a whole system here there's capacitance everywhere going on anyway we won't go into rfi and emi and all that sort of stuff but there is some sort of conducted issue there with that meter and uh, if you plug it into the ground terminal not nearly as much okay so there is something relative to the common measurement of the u1272 ace so there's obviously some sort of uh conducted common mode issue going on with this meter so I thought I'd actually uh, just first of all recreate it with exactly the same settings try out a whole bunch of different meters that we've got here and give it a burl so the first one is the uh, uh, Keysight U1273 AX. This is their uh, waterproof low temperature uh, version the screen is flickering because it has that OLED display let's plug it in and uh, see what we get Yep, you betcha, look at that, 12.1 amps, exactly the same thing going on there with that one. Not surprising because it's basically um, and all practically identical uh, meter to the U1272A, except it has the OLED uh, display on the thing. Now, let's try the uh, Keysight U1282A. Uh, you've seen this before, this is the uh, rugged meter and uh, not nearly as high but it's still there, okay? So we're getting negative 0.1 amps. So it still seems to be an issue with that one, but not nearly as bad as what we're seeing here. Let's try the uh, Gossen Metro. Oh, it just switched off. Thank you. Gossen Metro hit energy. Here we go. No worries whatsoever. We're down on the microamp range because this has a single jack to do everything. No, not, a, not an issue. Not an issue whatsoever. Uh, Fluke 87, uh, the venerable old uh, Fluke 87. Sorry, I'm not getting the best angles and stuff here. Anyway, it's reading bugger all. Let's go old school with a Fluke 27. Here we go. Nope, bugger all on that one too. And it doesn't matter if I do the negative one, of course. And the Bryman uh, BM869. There's a lot of fans of this meter out there. And... Nope. And once again, it automatically detected that there's a thing plugged in, the amps jack, and everything's hunky-dory. So let's go over to the Fluke 17B, shall we? Let's give that a burl. No, absolutely nothing. The EV Blog BM235. Nope, nothing. And the UniT, cheap UniT, UT61E. Absolutely nothing. And just for kicks... The uh, Keysight um, 3461A. Yep, 
that one actually shows something there. So there you go, minus 84, but it's microamps, right? So if we manually switch that to the amps range, it'd be naff all, really. But no, technically, um, that one has an issue as well. You plug in the negative one, so obviously reference to, uh, to mains earth in some way, shape, or form there. Plug it into the 10 amp jack, yep, similar sort of thing. But, you know, yeah, it's not a huge amount. So, as you can see, um, it basically only seems to be the uh, key sight, uh, these particular ones, these ones in particular, the U1270 uh, series meters. There's something going on there. Whether or not it's a huge deal, uh, you could say maybe not, but hey, uh, Bernard did actually get this problem in a real world scenario measuring uh, current, you know, project current from, uh, from a power supply. So yeah, there's some sort of conducted uh, mode vulnerability there, but I'll show you something interesting. Let's now try see what happens instead of just plugging it in, okay? Bingo. Oh, there it is, four amps or whatever. If we just hold it near it, bam, we can get that to happen as well. So it's not just conducted, it's radiated pickup as well. So, so what have they not designed the RFI? Im immunity good enough inside this thing? Um, seems to be that way. It's certainly picking it up. A lot of other meters out there don't have it. So let's just quickly experiment with some uh, settings here. We're on a square wave, of course. Let's actually change it to a sine wave. And I think the harmonics of the square wave are going to be an issue. We're at 10 volts peak to peak. So 5 megahertz. There's tons of harmonics right up into the RF region. So let's put it on sine wave. And hey, it's still there though, okay? So obviously, um, higher harmonics are causing more of an issue here. So I would presume, so let's go back to um, square wave. So let's go down in frequency and we should actually, I, I think this is gonna drop as we go down in frequency. At a certain point, yep, it's going down, down, oh, I have to go across there. Okay, nine, 900K, 400K, it's going down. There we go, it's starting to become a, whoop, did it go back up there a little bit? Maybe, it's gonna be all sorts of things, but nine kilohertz. You know, that's not particularly high. And once again, if we switch to sine, I reckon, yep, that would go away. Yep. But, so obviously the uh, square waves are calling, causing um, much higher harmonics there. So that can really jump up. We can actually get it even higher than that. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, there, there seems to be some points. But look, we can go up to like 32 amps. Wow, negative 32 amps, thank you very much. And if we actually, uh, that's plugged into the positive jack, if I plug that into the milliamp jack, there we go. If I plug that into the common terminal, there you go, same thing. But yeah, you plug that into the amps jack, and wow, look at that, thank you very much. And if we just dangle that over there, it'd be better if we got a coil or something, we could really couple it in. But uh, once again, we're, you know, we can, we're able to couple in, well, in what it thinks is a couple of milliamps, but yeah. And of course, we're going to see this uh, change with amplitude as well. So if we go over to our amplitude and then we drop our amplitude, there you go. One volt peak to peak. Okay, it's, it's becoming much less of an issue, 500 millivolts, you know, but still, yeah. That is interesting. That is definitely uh, confirmed Bernard's results that uh, this thing is susceptible, certainly, um, to uh, a direct uh, conducted RFI onto the uh, positive amps lead like this. But Bernard originally saw it um, when it wasn't being conducted in, it was being radiated in from a nearby RFI reader. Watch this, I'm uh, measuring one amp coming from my uh, Rigol power supply here, floating uh, power supply, no worries whatsoever. And if I go to plug this in, look, it's already changing. Just this coupling between <laughs> from this coax into that meter. Enough to, you know, throw it way out of spec. Wow, so I haven't even connected the damn thing up yet. So now if I hook it on, 
That's going to completely screw that up. Yep, and the Rigol power supply is still measuring one amp there. But yeah, this thing is completely knackered. Look, and even uh, one volt peak to peak here, more than enough to throw that completely out. And I try that on other meters and it's simply not an issue. It's only on the Keysight ones. Strain. And as far as the bench meter, that was a little bit susceptible. Meh, nothing, because as we saw before, it was like microamps. And check it out, if we fill up this meter, okay, let's put it down here, couple it into this lead. Yep, causes it, causes an issue down there, but let's, uh, let's fill her up and Look, as we go higher, the current is decreasing. Wow. Wow. Look at that, 0.2. <laughs> this is shocking. Yeah, 10 volts peak to peak. It's pretty severe at 10 megahertz. You know, that's... But, jeez, don't get this on any other meter. See? Absolutely nothing. And you'll notice it can change with just coupling of my hand as well. Watch this. Ooh, spooky action at a distance. Look at that. Oh. Um, it's nothing to do with my uh, ESD um, mat either. Look, if I um, actually, if I ground myself, I've disconnected my mat from uh, Mains Earth, okay? Look. So I may, and I've connected this through to uh, the mains earth on my uh, Rigol here, so it's actually connected through, and woo! So just still mains earth coupling, and if I connect myself to the mat as well, so I've got my finger actually under the conductive bottom of that mat. Properties change a little bit, maybe. If here we go, I'll lift my fingers. Nah, nah, nah. It's all the same. Anyway, spooky. So it's not picking something up, uh, you know, from my ESD mat or anything like that. I've had issues like that before, actually, with like a floating ESD uh, mat when it's not grounded and stuff like that. But I love it. <laughs> the thing that actually concerns me the most here is uh, not really the conducted mode uh, stuff when we uh, plug that in. Okay, it's an issue they need to look into. But the fact that you're just using this meter on the bench, you've got it sitting next to your... Uh, you know, your arb gen like this, and you switch it on, and look, it's the cable. It's just flapping around in the breeze, and of course, if you take it anywhere near it, you're gone ski. I mean, that's just, that is nuts. Absolutely nuts. So there you have it. The U1270 series has an RFI vulnerability. You remember the uh, good old Fluke 87 GSM phone? thing where you used to put a GSM uh, phone next to it and it would cause it to lock up and reset. It's not as bad as that, but well, actually I'd rather have my meter lock up and reset than um, just give you dodgy readings like that. So there's some RFI vulnerability there, both uh, conducted and coupled. So um, I haven't read the uh, spec sheet offhand for this thing, but they, they most likely have an electromagnetic uh, conformity spec for this thing, but yeah. Um, Keysight, please explain. Catch you next time. Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, why do I have the lab coat on today? Well, it's myth busting time. He got his mobile phone and he put it next to his Fluke 87.5 and it killed it. It bricked it. So, yeah, I thought. I'd sacrifice my 87.5 and try it out, because this is really interesting. Let's see what happens.